Yo guys, what is going on? My name is Vexoy, but you can call me Nick. Today, we are back with another game review. I'm cranking out these game reviews for 2022. I was about to say 2021. It's still hard to believe that we're in 2022. Time flies, doesn't it? If you've been a long time viewer of the channel, sorry if I've been sounding a little bit differently lately. I've been dealing with COVID and uh, bronchitis for the past couple of weeks, but the content must go on. So if I have to sound a little bit like this, for lack of a better term for a couple videos, so be it. Today, we are going to be reviewing It Takes Two. And this is actually the most recent game that I have uh, reviewed, like the, the newest game I have reviewed. This actually released in 2021. So this is like the newest game that I have reviewed to date. And uh, before we get straight into this review, I just wanna say this review may be somewhat controversial. But if you're passionate about this game and you want to hear, please hear me, hear me out, hear what I have to say before, you know, getting angry with me or dislike in the content. I think I explained myself and my position on this game very well, not to spoil how I feel about this game quite yet, but just wanted to preface this with that. So let's hop right into it. It Takes Two is a co-op only action adventure story rich platforming game which originally released on march 26th of 2021 i got around to playing this game at the very beginning of 2022 so i beat this game about nine months after it came out on the internet the average play time for this game was about 12 hours i believe and it took me about 10 to 10 and a half hours to beat because i left the game running a little bit checking things things like that so i'd say about 10 hours and I played this game with my friend who isn't too keen or too familiar with platforming games, so he's not exactly a platforming expert, so this should be about your average playtime as well. This game won a ton of awards in 2021. It won Game of the Year Award. It was in the top 5 for Best Narrative, which is insane. Top 5 for Best Game Direction. It won the Best Family Game of the Year, and it also won the Best Multiplayer Game as well. This may be the highest reviewed game I've ever reviewed as well. It also won the Steam Awards for Better With Friends Award as well, which this one, that's kind of a given. You have to play this game with a friend. You can't play this game solo, so eh, kind of cheap. And this was this game was at the top of everyone's best games list from 2021's. Everyone's. It was given 10 out of 10s, tons of 9 out of 10s, but as you guys know... I don't give out those high scores insanely easily. So let's see if this game is all that. Is it just hype or is this game really that good? So there are two main characters in this game because this is a two player game. You have to play it with two players. There's two main characters. One is named May and one is named Cody, a guy and a girl. They're two partners in marriage and to be specific, a failing marriage. They don't get along very well. And uh, it's kind of hard to see why they ever did get along. They don't seem to have anything in common. So they plan on getting a divorce. Cody is the dad in the relationship. He is more of a stay at home character. He doesn't have a job, not in the sense of like he's unemployed. That's not a theme in the, in the story. I think he just takes time to like care for the house and their daughter and things like that. He's somewhat of a uh, worried kind of cowardly character. And the other character, May, she's like a full-time engineer working 60 plus hours a week, making the money. She's like the brave one. She's like the stoic one. So these two characters, they go to plan to tell their daughter, whose name is Rose, about the divorce. Rose is about a seven or eight year old kid, I would assume. And she immediately goes up to her room to play. And she pulls out two dolls, one wooden and one clay one, both representing both of her parents. And she starts to cry hearing the news that the parents are getting divorced. And when the tears hit the dolls she's holding, you are both transported into the bodies of the dolls. The characters are obviously in distress, wondering what happened, and you are met by a magical book of love called Dr. Hakim. He is determined to get you back together and stay together to make you guys realize why you loved each other in the first place. And, you know, it's kind of like a couple's therapy type thing. While Dr. Hakim is determined to do that, Cody and May are more than determined to get back into their bodies, more so than even think about repairing their relationship. So Dr. Hakim puts you through a bunch of obstacles and challenges to rebuild your relationship while simultaneously working back to, hum to your human bodies. And that is essentially the main plot point of this game. I'm going to save my analysis for the narrative and writing of this game for the second half of the review and talk about the pure raw gameplay in the first half of this review. The gameplay itself is absolutely phenomenal. 
insanely good. The platforming is awe-inspiring, both looking and feeling. This game has great landscapes, great settings, all very creative and eye-catching. I absolutely loved it. The platforming itself is great as well. 10 out of 10. The puzzles and teamwork aspects hardly ever get repetitive, no idea is used twice, and it never gets too frustrating either. I've never gotten to the point in this game where I thought I had to head over to Google to find out what to do, but me and my buddy did have to rack our brains to figure it out, and that leads to the perfect level of challenge in my opinion. Not frustrating or hard enough where I feel like I have to look up the answers, but hard enough where I feel like I really have to think and sink my teeth into it to figure out what to do next. The action adventure itself is all great. Like I said, nothing in this game ever feels repetitive. The puzzles, the level design, the modes of transportation, your weapons, the boss fights, nothing. It's great. Let me break each one of them down a little bit. The level design is great. The shed is a great starting point. The tree is a good is a good setting. Rose's room was my personal favorite with, with a bunch of little sub settings inside of the main setting being her room. The clock tower was a good one. The snow globe was a nice change of pace, all cozy and warm and that was another good one. The garden had a great theme, an emotional theme, and the attic was great too. Even the most lackluster board, which I think would probably be the garden or the clock, was still great in my opinion. You get a set of weapons with work with each other in each setting or each different level, I guess you could call it, and they are also great. Like the hammer and nail combination is a great starter weapon. Um, the sap and match explosive is a good one. Using magnets was really fun. Honestly, I'm not even going to go on and on because at this point, I would just make a bullet list of every feature and aspect of this game and say that it was good. And I want to leave you guys with a point of surprise and, you know, things you don't know will be coming. But I do have to mention that ice skating and the rainbow road type section of the game were two of my favorites, if not the absolute best. Oh, and my favorite setting was the kaleidoscope. I loved that. I thought it was really cool. There's also little mini games scattered throughout all the boards, which is good just to take a quick little break from the, the main aspect of the game and just have a little fun with whoever you're playing with with the mini games. The only little complaint about the gameplay, I would say, is that Mei, the girl character, gets almost every better ability every single time. So if you are going to play this game, try to take the girl character. It's definitely more exciting and has the better abilities, but that's the only negative about the gameplay, and it's not that big of a negative. The game itself and the core gameplay and platforming is as good as it gets in gaming, and it's this game's main selling point. Unfortunately, I am going to have to switch gears. Like I said earlier, I would get back to the narrative of this game, and as good as this game's gameplay is, the game's narrative is just as strong, but in the opposite direction. I tried to brush it off at first and be like, yeah, well, this is mainly a platformer, not a story game, but they interjected the story into the main point of this game, so I can't overlook it. It almost feels like the story is somewhat of an afterthought. There are good storytelling moments, don't get me wrong, but the bad outweighs the good by two or three times over. Actually, it's not even so much the narrative as it is the writing, but don't get me wrong, both are definitely an issue. It even begins to take away from the gameplay itself and how enjoyable that was. First, the characters are mostly unlikable. They have their moments, don't get me wrong, like in the snow globe they had a good moment, but even then the writing at the end of that kind of took away from it. I'm not going to spoil anything and plot points like that, but you'll know what I mean probably. Or May in the garden at the end and Cody in the attic, those were two good points. But most of the time they're just unlikable, annoying, and contradictory. Cody, the guy, is like a dorky, snarky character, yet wimpy and cowardly. And May is like a reserved, closed off, analytical, stoic, but to a fault person. These character traits would be cool, fine, acceptable, whatever, if they overcame these with the progression of the game and the story, but they don't. At the end, they almost have the exact same negative character traits, and that just kind of flows weird with the game. You know, over the progress of the game, You'd think they'd iron these kinks out, but they don't. It's there to the very end, which kind of makes the whole adventure seem pointless in a way. Like the snow glow moment, like I mentioned earlier, could have been a super sweet moment with the characters, but the writing didn't have it happen that way. The mirror in the attic right before the end of the game could have been a huge, huge character development point where May was about to like overcome how closed off she was with her emotions and how stoic she was at all times. It looked like she was about to finally open up truly. And just as you think that's going to happen, nothing does. 
And that I really didn't like that. The writers really dropped the ball there. I hate to say it. The path of repairing a relationship in real life, I know it's not a linear path, but the quote-unquote progression of healing this marriage, or should I say lack thereof, does not make sense in this game whatsoever, and it's just frustrating, if anything. One moment you'll be talking about the best parts of your marriage, and being all sweet with each other, and talking about the good times, and then a minute or two later, the characters will be loudly and proudly talking about how they're still ecstatic to get their divorce still. It's frustrating when you're rooting for the characters and the writing has it like this without placing any spoilers speaking of frustration from before what the hell was that elephant scene what the hell was that that's all i'm gonna say i'm not gonna give any details but oh my god was that scene so out of place especially because it never even got addressed what happened in that scene never got addressed later on again in the story when it definitely should have been it could have been a great bonding moment with all the characters but they just ignored that it was a big point of the story for a good chunk of time getting to this elephant yet another poor writing decision just didn't make sense here the worst part is that they definitely had the time to do this as well. It's not like this game felt short, to be honest with you. Another weird uh, writing decision is that while the parents are in the bodies of the dolls, the characters, the mom and dad, are just like quote unquote sleeping, but the dad is sleeping sitting up in a chair at a desk, and the mom is on the couch just not moving. How does like an 8 year old girl never get suspicious of what's going on? She just talks to the lifeless bodies like nothing is wrong. And speaking of like the bodies real quick, the facial animations are kind of off in this game. There's not a lot of emotion in the faces, which doesn't distract me or take away from this game too much, just wanted to point it out. Now to circle back what I said in the beginning, the platforming is always good in this game, but the focal point of the main story made me want to get through the platforming just to progress the story. So I was trying so hard to progress the game and its storyline so quickly that I forgot to, you know, take the time to smell the roses, metaphorically speaking, of course. With the story tied in with the platforming, it kind of makes the game feel stretched out and I feel like it could have been shortened down. But if there was no story involved, I wouldn't feel this way. If this game was structured in like a Mario type setting where it's just board after board after board after board, without a story, I know it's just a straight up platformer with no story, I wouldn't feel like a big rush to get through a level, you know, quote unquote, get through a level because I was sunk into the story and I wanted it to progress and I wanted to see the culmination of everything. So that kind of made me rush through the platforming which the platforming was great, and in retrospective, I wish I didn't have that mindset through this game, but the story is important, and I think you will get attached to the story, but be let down. Last but not least, let's talk about the conclusion of the story. Holy smokes was this underwhelming. Was it unsatisfactory? Especially, the whole point of this adventure was never really touched upon or wrapped up at all. It was just left in the air, not addressed negatively, positively, or indifferent. It just wasn't addressed at all. Same with the elephant. Like I said, another thing I was just never addressed. It was super weird. Honestly, a predictable, fulfilling, conclusive, quote unquote, fairy tale type ending is forever going to be more favorable than this. I know you don't want every story to be predictable, but sometimes that's okay. Because it's not even like this game took a risk and went with a quote unquote bad ending. It just left things out and that's not good. I could almost applaud the game if it did something brave, like if one of the spouses turned on each other at the end and said, oh, I hated you this whole time, or, you know, obviously more detailed than that. Nothing crazy, there's nothing daring, it just felt incomplete. It felt like the story was rushed and didn't wrap up any loose ends and almost felt like the story wasn't even played through. Feels like it was a huge afterthought. And it's really sad I have to tear into this game like this because I had fun with the platforming. If I at least got a good conclusion on the story, I could maybe let some other things go. Because that's again what I was playing this game for. Maybe that's on me. Maybe you shouldn't focus on the story. Maybe you should just focus on the platforming. I thought that for a second, but then I'm like, they made the story a big deal. I can't just be like, oh, well, maybe you shouldn't pay attention. No, they lacked in the story department and they have to be called out for that. That's how I'm insanely confused how this got top five for narrative of the year. I wouldn't even give this top 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 of the year. It's insane. So with everything being said, I kind of wrapped up everything I feel about this game minus the score. 
And here's the controversial part. I'm going to have to give this game a 5.3 out of 10. I went back and forth on the score for this game so many times, but at the end of the day, I couldn't give it higher than a six. And even that felt a little too high. If you haven't checked out my game review rating system explained video, and maybe that'll maybe justify the score a little bit in my, in your opinion, but a 5.3 is equivalent to like a, a C if you check the description of that video, there's like letter grades as well. I, I did a really in-depth uh, breakdown of my review system. So I have to give this game a 5.3. If you don't know what that means, that's just slightly, barely, oh, so slightly above average. You know, kind of like a C in school when you got a C on your paper. Once again, super short summary. The platforming and gameplay was great, but dragged down by its lackluster and incomplete story. So that's what I thought of It Takes Two. I know a very unpopular opinion. This is my longest review because I had to really go in depth about that. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you going to play this game after I reviewed it? Do you think I'm wrong? Honestly, if you think I'm wrong and you think my opinion is invalid, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys in the comments. If you love the story, let's talk about it. Let's try to keep it spoiler free for everyone, but let's talk about it. So that was It Takes Two. It's 5.3. I hate to do it, but it has to be done. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out more game reviews, there's a playlist. Thank you for watching. You know the whole YouTube thing. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't got to talk your ear off about that. You know how that works. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs> you hear that? Oh, my voice. Uh, it's gone.